Rittenhouse verdict was as it should be. It's literally video footage of the entire scenario. What happened in the scenario was a young man decides to be in a community that he works in, that he has activities in, his community. He then decides to say, I want to protect this community from the people that were there to riot. We're not talking about people protesting actual injustice. We're literally talking about rioting. And in doing so, he decides to be armed, not only with a firearm, an AR, but also medical kits. There's video of him cleaning the community up after riots days prior. He went there and some dudes fucked around and found out. The reality is, if Kyle Rittenhouse would have been guilty, that would have been saying that you don't have the right to defend your life from angry mobs, even when you're running away three times from those mobs. So I think that the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict was justified. Anything else would have been a travesty of justice. When you study and pay attention to the plays, you know, when you play professional sports, the team that you're going against knows every single play that y'all are gonna run. They, want, they, they watch tape on you. The opposing team watches tape on your entire player career. When you watch tape on how the oppositional media works, you're not surprised, nor should anybody be, that they would utilize this white teenager shooting pedophiles, one guy convicted of sexually assaulting five young boys, and other people that were trying to assault and or kill him with a firearm, you wouldn't be surprised that media would somehow make that about him being a white supremacist and not self-defense as it is. If you're paying attention to the play that media run, this is not a new play. There's a finite amount of plays in this media's playbook. The problem is most people have short attention spans if they even read or if they even pay attention to certain things. So since they aren't paying attention, the plays continue to work. There was nothing new that this media did or said that I would think was surprising. The audacity to somebody that's new to the game could be looked at as surprising because it's so backwards. Now, certain outlets, more left-leaning outlets, backpedal and trying to bring up the actual facts of the case that they failed to report the entire time that this trial and everything was going on. That's the part that's funny to me in watching it, but this ain't the first time. They always backpedal. Big Pharma backpedals, the Department of Justice backpedal. Corrupt portions of America will backpedal and corporate portions of America will backpedal when you pin them in the corner. The problem is most Americans are not putting them in the corner. And now that we're starting to see that change, hence why we're seeing those media outlets backpedal. Not because they're actually implementing journalistic integrity, but because they just don't want to catch a lawsuit. To the people that say this wouldn't have been an outcome if Kyle Rittenhouse would have been, I don't know, Quadir Rittenhouse, if he would have been melanated, it would have been differently. The same day that this verdict came out, Andrew Coffey had a more extreme situation and he was also exonerated. He used his firearm in self-defense against law enforcement, trying to execute a raid on his house, basically. Grazed two police officers, his girlfriend, you know, unfortunately lost her life in that exchange, but he was found not guilty. He happened to be melanated. Tupac shot two off-duty police officers in Atlanta that were accosting him and didn't go to jail for that. Stand your ground laws in America. Melanated beings benefit from standing their ground in self-defense against violent attackers more than any other ethnic group in America. The people that say that are repeating the script, they're repeating the same script that mass, mass media presents to them and says, oh, you're a victim, you have to, this wouldn't work for you. This also does not justify the injustice that has happened in America. Let's be fucking clear about that. This isn't a space where we saying, oh, America's perfect. No, gun control in essence was started because of the imperfections and inequalities that exist systemically in America. Two things can be true at once, but the people that say that don't know the data. Nick Irving, the most accomplished sniper in American history. He wrote, writes a bunch of books. So a few years ago, a guy tried to steal from him. He pulled his firearm and held him there until the police came. He's still alive. So the people that say those statements, they find joy or some sort of power in their victimhood and 
presenting that narrative. To be stronger takes more responsibility. Those people don't want to be responsible for themselves. Those are the people that visually see themselves as the person with the firearm presented on them, not the person with the firearm defending life. And it's, I understand why they do it. Most of their blue check friends keep repeating the same dumb shit. A bunch of blue checks and so-called liberal platforms somehow call a 17 year old with all of the information that is out there that CNN actually reported the facts later on, still pushing this narrative, still saying he traveled across state lines with a gun, not true. He, his parents didn't know what he was, where he was at, not true. They still pushing this agenda. So I understand why a lot of people that look to them for leadership when they're not leaders, I understand how it's easy to get tricked by that matrix and that's what happens. So those people that say that are victims of their own lack of research, their own lack of objectivity, their own willingness to maintain this thought process of if you're black with a firearm, you can't possibly be the person defending life. Those people are weak-minded currently. Our job is to make them become stronger, but I understand completely why they rest in that false narrative. I personally know multiple melanated beings that have defended their lives with firearms. Some of them were lethal force. I know these people, I can call them on the phone. The mainstream media is more powerful with a voice because they have a lot of networks, a lot of outlets to express the thought process. So the reason why we see a lot of Americans listen to these so-called trusted sources over than the people that they may be able to reach out and touch is because that same reason, they've been positioned as trusted sources. When in reality, they have no interest either through lack of intelligence and, and serious cowardice, or they're just deliberately manipulating a whole entire group of people. There is resources to be had and money to be made and ignorance around black people. If black people start empowering themselves, a lot of this other money gonna start shifting back into those same communities. So I understand why people may not be aware of Mike Waller, who's used his firearm coming back from training to defend life and protect his son's life with, who was with him when someone pulled a firearm on him. That person did not go to jail. That person lived, meaning Mike, lived. We have these examples all over the place, but in those spaces, Mike may not want to be on Front Street saying he had to take another life. What blue checks and these so-called fake-ass trusted sources will do is position themselves as if they're trying to speak for black people, when in reality, they're speaking for white liberals who want to make black people a permanent underclass. Our job is to highlight those cases respectfully. Again, stand your ground laws benefit black Americans more than any other ethnic group in America at this current time. We gotta continue to highlight that. To the people that will present because I am in alignment with this Kyle Rittenhouse verdict, they may say, well, your black guns matter. You guys are educating urban America, black Americans, all melanated beings primarily on the right to keep, their natural right to keep and bear arms they somehow see this as a conflict because they're looking at it through the lens of anything other than the Second Amendment and a human's right to defend their life. Kyle Rittenhouse wants to be a police officer. There's a chance that if he becomes a police officer, he may enact some of the same unconstitutional laws or mandates or statutes that he's just found himself a victim of. 10 years from now, he may be a person trying to tell somebody what gun they shouldn't have on them. That's a reality of someone that wants to become law enforcement in this nation as it currently stands. I understand that, but in that scenario, that young man used a firearm, a black gun, which mattered to defend his life. If that precedent maintains itself, which it should, because the supreme law of the land is the Second Amendment, black Americans benefit from that as well. Whatever I have to use, to overturn the racist practice of gun control. And when the precedents are set, I don't care about the person. I don't care about their future. I don't care about, I care more about, did they use a firearm to defend themselves when life was in imminent danger? That's it. The person that can't see through the fog that Hollywood presents isn't really well read enough or studied enough 
to understand where I'm coming from in the first place. I can't, nor do I want to change their mind in that way around that. I'll have a different conversation with that person about something else. They have the right to disagree with me. My position of the Second Amendment being a human right for all beings to keep and bear arms is supported by a jury of peers that decided using the law and the Constitution that Kyle Rittenhouse should go home to his family. If I'm in Chicago, as I am a lot of times doing firearms classes, I carry a firearm in Chicago. I am not licensed to carry in Chicago. Licenses are infringements on my human rights. And if I have to defend life, would those same people say, Maj shouldn't have been in Chicago trying to help his community, and Maj, because he was in Chicago with a firearm, he forfeited his right to defend his life because he didn't have a FOID card. He didn't have a license to carry in Chicago. Those people have to ask themselves that because what we support is the precedent that's gonna be set. The precedent that I want upheld is any human of any background, age group, demographic, has a human and natural right to defend their life and other lives in times of imminent and immediate danger. Period, flat out. This Kyle Rittenhouse trial, verdict, and a, a, a host of other things tie into our overall goal at Black Guns Matter. That goal being the preservation of the people to keep and bear arms and defend themselves, not just from rapists and weirdos and pedophiles, but the government, the government. Kyle Rittenhouse just wasn't the only thing on trial. That young man wasn't the only person on trial. What was being under the microscope was the way that America views their right to keep and bear arms. This all ties in together. I'd never said I only want black people to have the means to defend themselves. I want everyone to. The problem is the black community has been the target of the racist practice of gun control. So if I have to highlight a scenario that showcases just like this person has the means to defend himself, just like Tupac did, just like I wish Nipsey Hussle would have been able to, this is all connected to our work. And anyone that wants to support that, they know where our GoFundMe link is. <laughs>